<clears throat> Welcome. This is it. This is the fight. The fight is for your attention. If you listen to what people say, you can't help but take it on board. So the fight is for your attention. They want to keep you in the mainstream where they can control what you're hearing. And therefore they can feel safe that you're not going to question what's going on. <clears throat> John Lennon. Great man. crazy you can't follow their rules a working class hero is something to be a working class hero is something to be Tortured and scared you for twenty odd years. Then they expect you to pick a career when you can't really function because you're so full of fear. Keep you doped with religion sex and TV Do you think you're so clever and classless and free But you're still fucking peasants as far as I can see Working class hero with something to be Working class hero with something to be There's room at the top, they're telling you still First you must learn how to smile as you kill If you want to be like the folks on the hill A working class hero is something to be If you want to be a hero then just follow me to be goes out to J 
Jimmy Savile. And I'm not joking either. You can see my video, Jimmy Savile scapegoat. And then you'll know I'm not joking. <clears throat> the news at 10. I'm here with immunologist, virologist and epidemiologist, PhD, Dr. Thimble. Good evening. Oh, good evening. Do you support the actions of the government in dealing with this pandemic? I stand by the government's actions 100% as they only follow the advice of experts in the field. So Boris earlier said the AstraZeneca vaccine is Mighty Mouse here to save the day. Oh, right. Well, I guess that is true. The Prime Minister said we should all sing the song and yearn for the vaccine. Will you sing it? Mighty Mouse is here today. Here he comes to save the day. What is your opinion of the safety of the Pfizer and Moderna vaccine? Yes, very safe. Have you seen the full data on these mRNA experimental vaccines? No, not yet. Is there a chance that vaccines in general are the cause of climbing autoimmune disorders? Um, uh, mighty mouse is... <laughs> right? <laughs> you know what I mean by all this? Do you know, I have to stop and explain myself? Well, you know, probably. So, um, Bill Gates is the Antichrist. Quite clear. Uh, it's quite clear that the Antichrist has been revealed. So I tried to uh, make 666 out of his name. Couldn't quite manage it. But that Bill's quite interesting, just Bill on its own. Uh, depending on which Gematra code you use, if we go by the most official one, it's this one. Only goes up to 21, misses out a few letters. L becomes 11 because we don't have J. Or something else. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. Anyway, don't worry about it because it's a load of rubbish. Um, well, it's, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But the reason um, I'm looking at that is because with Revelations, the first beast and the second beast with two horns and spoke like a dragon and stuff like that. You know, these this powerful prophecy of Revelations has a, a truth that sort of a zoomed out truth and also a zoomed in truth, you know, so it's got true, true things on different levels. So there's this first and second beast as they are, uh, um, the first beast is the colonial European nations, and then the second beast is the USA. But also on a more zoomed in truth, you've got more in this time that we're in now, like a person, like a first sort of prelude to the Antichrist and then the Antichrist. And I'd say the prelude to the Antichrist is Tony Blair. And then now the Antichrist is Bill Gates. And that's um, just, you know, I don't know, becoming more and more obvious, really, which is kind of a good thing, you know, to get the, um, you know, so at least we know who we're up against type of thing. Um, <clears throat> so this, so, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, Maybe I'll go into Revelations at some point. I'm not going to do it now. <clears throat> I'm just having a quick but look back at what I've written down just to, you know, update you really. But, you know, this just this thing just becomes more and more ridiculous. And what's strange is that, for me, how many people aren't questioning it. And, I mean, people are tuning into talk radio and things because they've got an alternative view. But as they get more popular, um, they obviously get told off and move their presenters around a bit and, you know, to keep them, you know, within the rules of Ofcom because that's they are subject to those rules. You know, and we 
we got the same thing happening. You know, people went over to YouTube to find the truth, and then YouTube starts getting restricted. Um, now people are going over to things like Brighteon, uh, BitChute, and you know, basically because we understand that when we're not getting the other side of the story, we always know there's another side of the story, right? <laughs> always two sides to the story. So when we know we're only getting one side, we go off searching uh, to other places to find the truth. Or just the other side so that we can then make an informed decision. Just like the doctor who said he would take the vaccine once he can make an informed decision. Because at the moment he's unable to make an informed decision on the mRNA vaccines because they haven't given out the data of exactly what's in the vaccine and how it works and everything. They haven't given these doctors the info. So I watched the Plandemic 2 on uh, Brighteon and um, brilliant, absolutely brilliant documentary. And I was thinking myself of doing a timeline, um, but I really don't need to because that Plandemic 2 is pretty comprehensive, conclusive. We don't really need to look at the times. I mean, we've had... What, what can sort of give evidence that this has been planned is how things seem to happen, happen on specific dates. Like, you know, they they planned it out ahead of, a, ahead of a time. Right, we'll have the virus released here. We'll get the vaccine released on this date. And one of the dates seems to be the 8th. So the 8th of December, very significant date. And we had the first vaccine injected. Uh, we had Trump's... Um, chance of being president totally finished we had this woman journalist who was an anti-vaxxer found dead um, there was something else on the 8th of December ah, can't remember it was something else so um, I guess and then we're looking towards the 8th of March as well 8th of March so that's a quarter of a year later uh, the schools are planning to go back in this country and also the 22nd of things happen to be uh, thing on the 22nd here so it's almost you know it's almost like we can almost predict when when things are gonna come out and you know, is the world different after this lockdown? Yeah, absolutely. Um, hugely different. Anyway, watch Plandemic 2 because that's really good. And um, can do a better job than me just sitting here talking on my own. But that's what I do sometimes. Just let you know I'm still here and... What's going on? What is going on? I've got a parking ticket. <laughs> I'm not going to pay it. It's like they want me to pay 60 quid now. Or it will be 100 quid. Got caught me by camera. Um, well, I, I, you know, I, I will resist. I, I had no idea that they, I've lived in this town for years. It's back of the post office, right? So if I didn't see the signage driving in that they're now smart parking, whatever, because I'm looking not to run over other people. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'm looking where I'm driving, not reading signs as I'm driving into a car park that I know has a 20-minute waiting bay. So before the 20 minutes was up, I vacated the bay and then nobody else wanted it, so I used it again. Can they prove I didn't do that? So yeah, like I say, 60 quid if you pay it now, 100 quid if you pay it later. There's not a big difference, is it? I think these things are whole, wholly unfair. <laughs> wholly unfair. If they can do 
um, you know, they should just charge what it would have cost to park the extra 10 minutes, whatever. Do you know what I mean? It's so, so petty. This is the only way they make their money. Do the councils get a cut? Anyway, do you know what I mean? <laughs> There's more important things going on. I mean, we are going to come out of this. But you see, you know, I've got issues about the vaccine, worries about the vaccine, not mainly for me, mainly for the population. But I, I think it's quite, it's a good chance that there, there won't be that much bad from this vaccine. And then, you know, the argument a year later will be, oh, you were complaining about the vaccine, saying it's going to be so bad, and see, it wasn't that bad. But it sets a precedent, doesn't it? I haven't agreed with, you know, a lot of health treatments. I've had vaccines in the past. I've had yellow fever, whatever, I didn't know. And maybe it did affect my health. I mean, my health in my 20s is probably the worst, worst it's been. I was quite an unhealthy mid-twenties person, you know. Um, I, I mean, it wasn't great. You know, I had a lot of, I had a bit, of, I think I had IBS. That's why I stopped taking white sugar. You know, so I had issues with my health. I didn't feel fit and healthy a lot of the time. Now, how do I know these weren't long-term effects of the vaccines that I've taken over the years? I don't know. I didn't assume that they were at the time. But, you know, you just, you just don't know. You can't, you can't say, well, what would my life have been like if I hadn't had this? But since I spent a week in hospital in my mid-twenties... And they didn't know what was wrong with me. You know, I had pneumonia. They'd done an x-ray and nothing showed up when I got in there. So they were trying other tests. Kept me in for a week. It was up to me to get myself better and get out of there. I had to insist that I let my, be able to run myself a bath. You couldn't open the, they couldn't open the windows. And they couldn't change the heating. It was just... Do you know what I mean? I just... And the only time you got any information was when a doctor came round which was once a day on a work day it come round with his entourage shove something up your ass and he's off again and then you know if you were in on a weekend forget being able to get out do you know what I mean even if you're doing cartwheels you can't get out until the doctor's seen you do you know what I mean so I just thought I thought what they're doing here is trying to put people off <laughs> getting ill right incentive to stay fit and healthy <laughs> kind of work because I just thought I'm not going into a hospital again forget it I don't care what's wrong with me and I've stuck to that um, I did reluctantly go to the doctors once actually twice after that and they're absolutely no use whatsoever once I had deli belly it took them so long to respond and set up when I should bring them in a poo sample. By the time I brought them in a poo sample, it had been two and a half months and I was getting better on my own. And other times when I had a wisdom tooth infection and then my face started clogging up and I went to the doctor, they gave me some antibiotics. They said, as soon as the antibiotics work and you're able to open your mouth again, go to the dentist. So I did that. I went to the dentist. The dentist said, right, yeah, you'll have to book you in a an appointment in a hospital to have your wisdom tooth removed. And I was like, why don't you just re remove the tooth next to it that's stopping it moving? Ow! You know, they don't do that. So I didn't go, and my face uh, enlarged a couple of more times after that. And one point got so painful that I stuck a pin in it <clears throat> to relieve the the strain which kind of worked but left me with a hole in my face <laughs> which took a while to heal and then it happened again the second time it happened it was easier because the scar tissue was stretchier than the rest so that was easier to pop and I had to vigorously move as well so I had to pop it and then do some vigorous dancing to get it to um, come out 
And I'll see all my family and friends like, oh man, I'm sure you shouldn't go to the doctor. <laughs> no, I, I saw the doctors, I'm not going to the doctors. Um, anyway, eventually healed, tooth has done its thing, it's sorting itself out now. Yeah, and uh, you know, what's the cause of this problem? It's you know because I was a good boy from a young age up until my uh, mid twenties, and brushed my teeth twice a day, as they said you should. But it didn't stop me getting stains. I just went to the dentist every six months, and they scraped my teeth away. And you come back, and I feel all rough and horrible. So I thought, well, I'll start doing it myself then. Get <laughs> mainly just these front two. I'd get a Brillo pad on them and just get rid of the stains, but that wasn't a good idea because what I've done is I've rubbed off my enamel. So anyway, I've learnt my lessons from, you know, doing things my way and also the lessons of doing it the way they tell us to. And um, at least when I do it my way, I learn, I learn, you know, don't do that, that doesn't work but do that, that does work. There's loads of things that I've done that do work. I do feel well and healthy. I'm still able to, you know, I check, you know, my if I went for a run now, yeah, I'd be knackered, but then I'd recover and I could run again. I ride my bike, blah, blah, blah. Watch what I put in my mouth. Watch what comes out of it. And, um, yeah, I'm alright, Jack. <clears throat> now, talking of Bill Gates again, I do think it's funny how you've probably heard the adverts recently. His authoritative new book. <laughs> and then he talks. And he's like, yeah, I think we should save the world. And then I got a really authoritative voice. Yeah. I've got an authoritative voice because I've, you know, God, God's on, God's, me and God, like, you know, I'm working, for, I work for God, by the way, I'm servant of God, and um, who's God? Well, my God, you know, I, there's a Bible I've read and other things I've read, but, you know, it's my God, my own specific viewpoint on it, and it's an actually, I actually feel from God, so, if I was afraid of doing the wrong thing, if I thought, God, am I really making a massive mistake here? I usually think, well, hang on, I, God hasn't given me any warnings, and I've had warnings from God, you know, I know what they're like, and I've had encouragements from God, and I know what they're like. So, do you know what I mean? That's where I put my trust. And, um,. I absolutely don't want to put a needle in my arm again with anything that's, um, you know, been manipulated genetically. I think I think you're just dicing with danger, and they don't really know the long-term effects of this, or they do, and they've designed it to be a certain to do a certain thing. But how do they know it's going to affect the wide variety of genome types, haplogroups that we have all around the world. And then we've all got our own specific individual differences. So they are really, really, really playing with fire and they really, really shouldn't be. And if you watch the Plandemic 2 documentary, what, what they're kind of saying is happening is that organisations like the CIA are running the country and they're influenced by da, 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 da. Uh, and it'll be the same in England you know in a sense that the control over our countries has has gone away from the elected members they're they're so um, compromised so bribable corruptible most of them that you know it's not in their hands anymore it doesn't matter who gets the power who we end up voting in it will already be corrupted and you see their influence on us when we vote as well so 
you know, we've lo- they, we haven't got control of the virus. We haven't got control of our country. We haven't got control over the media. You know, well, we haven't got control. Somebody has got control. And they're using it to try and control us. And this is why the war is on your attention. And I think I've taken up enough of it as it is. So if you've watched, thanks. And see you on the next one. Ciao.